Good afternoon and welcome to the uh, City of Franklin Capital Investment Committee meeting. And we will have the roll call. Alderman Blanton. Here. Alderman Berger. Here. Chair is here. Uh, we'll have the approval of the minutes. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. So motion, motion and second. Um, Alderman Blanton. Yes. Alderman Berger. Yes. Chair Prutz. <clears throat> yes. All right, new business. Consideration of draft City of Franklin contract number 2021-0257 with C.D.M. Smith for the Water Reclamation Facility National Pollutant Discharge Elimination System permit renewal application support for an amount of $30,000. Um, Michelle O'Brien or anybody else? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm your Michelle for today. <laughs> okay. Oh. So, uh, anyway, so um, as you know, we have a water reclamation facility on Claude Yates. Uh, I can't believe it's been five years, but um, every five years we renew permits and we're um, seeking to have CDM Smith support us in developing it and evaluating data and applying. So, um, um, and we're not asking any changes of our permit requirements for TDEC this year, so we anticipate it to be a fairly smooth process. And Mark, this is a discharge permit that covers the existing 12 million gallons a day. Correct. And, uh, ramped up to the, the eventual 16. 16 million dollar, million gallon a day capacity. Correct, yes. Uh, all right, I'm, I just have a question. Every five years, we have to do what? We have to renew our permit. Um, it's a state requirement. Even if it's not done? Well, yes, ma'am. We're still discharging. It's for the existing operations as well as the expanded oh. operations. Okay. It right. covers both. Okay, that's good. All right, we have a, a motion and a second. All in favor, let's see. Uh, Alderman Blanton. Alderman Berger, Aye. Chair votes yes. All right, now item number three, consideration of draft City of Franklin contract number 2019-0310, final change order with Middle Tennessee uh, infrastructure for Holiday Court pump station project. So Mark. this this project, um, was completed in February of this year. Um, reason why it's taken so long to come to the final change orders, we've been going back and forth with as-built drawings and we finally received those. This final change order is to decrease uh, project cost by $29,000, um, well, $29,700. So. All right, is that in full operation? It's in full operation, yes, ma'am. That serves, tell us in a nutshell what that serves. It's the east side of uh, North Royal Oaks, there's a small lift station tucked behind, um, there's, a, there's a hotel back in there, and it serves a relatively small area over um, west of the interstate okay. and east of North Royal Oaks. All right, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Move for approval. Second, I love a deduct. I do love a deduct. I love a deduct. <laughs> uh, Alderman Blanton? Yes. Alderman Berger? Yes. Chair votes yes. Thank you. Um, consideration item four, consideration of ordinance 2021-38, an ordinance to reduce the speed limit on Board Mill Avenue from the eastern terminus of New Highway 96 West to Downs Boulevard. Uh, do we have our traffic engineer, Mr. Mosher? Thank you for all your work on this. Oh, that's fine. So we had um, part of the job, part of the job. <laughs> so we had a resident um, ask for uh, a study on the speed limit for that portion of Boyd Mill from 90, New Highway 96 down to Downs. Um, it is a, currently a 40 mile an hour speed limit that runs past Jim Warren Park. And then on the west side of Downs, uh, Boyd Mill Avenue goes to 30 miles an hour. Uh, all the way up to Carlisle Lane, and Carlisle Lane goes to 30 miles an hour, too. So <clears throat> we decided it was probably a good segment to study. 
looked at it. Um, it definitely does not warrant the 40 mile an hour speed limit currently. Um, and to make it contiguous, we wanted to bring it to 30 with the western section of Boyd Mill. And, and there's reasons. Um, there's lots of pedestrians, there's a park, we all know. Um, so it just makes sense to bring that down. What is it currently? It's 40 miles an hour currently. And you're proposing, I don't, I don't have my agenda up because it's not going to happen. Proposing 30 is to it make 30? it contiguous. Yeah. 30, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sounds good. I really appreciate what you do because when people call about traffic, you're, they're mad usually. They're usually mad. And, and I understand <laughs> that. So your response to me and to them is, is really gratifying and I appreciate that. Yeah, no problem. Very much. Yeah. Because I don't know what to say <laughs> when they call. <laughs> well, we, we'll look at stuff when it warrants it for sure, you know, uh, absolutely. And this one definitely warranted it. Well, you, you make it very, uh, it, it, you're very understanding of the problem and you make them understand the solution. So I appreciate it very much. Thank you. Thank, do, do we have a motion? Uh, motion to uh, approve with the question afterwards. Well, uh, second. Okay. All right. Yes. So, I mean, I see the map. Thank you. Love the map. So, Boyd Mill, um, does it start, and I can look at this and see, but at that light by Freedom, right? is that Boyd Mill, and then it cuts off to be, when it goes through the park, that's a, it used to be a different road growing up. It was a different name. I guess I'm trying to say, is it going to be consistent from the light mm -hmm. yes. right across from the school all the way to down? All the way past Downs and all the way back up to Carlisle. What did the name of that road used to be before? Mm -hmm. uh, Remember, because we split it so that if you wanted to go through the park, you take a left and then you end up at Boyd Mill. Because the, there is a residential section between 11th Avenue. Yeah. And come, uh, cumbersome or cumbersome. Lane. Culberson. 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 That's yeah. it. Culberson. Culberson. It is Lane. cumbersome. It is cumbersome. Yeah. It is cumbersome. <laughs> Culberson Lane. Yeah. That so. was the that was the original. Culberson name. was the original name of the road. Okay. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Thank you very much. Oh wait a minute. We need to vote. A vote. Alderman Blanton. Yes. Alderman Berger. Yes. Chair votes yes. Thank you so much. Um. Number five, consideration of draft amendment one to City of Franklin to contract number 2020-0222, an amendment to a professional services agreement with Jackson Thornton Utilities for revenue requirements analysis and cost of service rate study for the water, wastewater, Whew. Reclaimed water system for a not to for a not to exceed amount of eight thousand dollars. Now you know how the mayor feels. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that other one is we just like it up there. And number two. So next Tuesday, uh, the board will consider the second of three readings uh, a rate adjustment, um, and that. That ordinance is the result of the cost of service analysis that Jackson Thornton helped us uh, go through. We had a number of uh, different iterations that we had done um, due to some complicating factors. We had to uh, include, if you remember at the time, we had a revenue bond coming through as well as SRF funding. Uh, so they, we, we asked them to perform a, um, some additional work with respect to, to those items. So We uh, asked them to do additional work. Yes, it was beyond their original scope. So um, because of these, you know, again, the, the different complicating factors such as the bond and the SRF funding, um, they had to do a number of different iterations and check on debt service coverage and a number of other things that were not um, anticipated in the original scope. The original scope was a value of $65,000 and uh, we're requesting that um, we do an amendment for an additional $8,000 for that contract. Uh, do we have a motion and a second? I'll um, make ask. a motion to approve. Second. All right, now I want to ask, is it just always a given that we're going to have to increase the amount? Of a, of a contract? Of all of all of these 
studies and all of these things. We always have to come back and get more money. I, I don't think I'd like to answer that. Given. No. Yes. Yeah, and you don't always not. have to. But in this case, we had a lot of complexity because we had an additional loan we had to secure as well as issuing bonds around the same time and we were making sure we were hitting coverage benchmarks and being responsive to what the state needed. So it's always individual item by individual item. I know it may seem like it happens a lot, but uh, it doesn't always happen. Not and in this time. case, it's okay. certainly justified and there's a lot going on because we had to modify our financing strategy because we didn't get the final 30 million in completely from the state revolving loan fund. And we had to blend borrowing money through a revenue bond plus a amount from the state revolving loan fund that changed twice during the process as okay. well. That's good. Thank you very much. Thank you. I didn't mean to be. Um, no, I, I understand. It's I, I prefer the deducts versus the um, ads. So. <laughs> okay. I, I, I don't want to be a, a pot star, but you know, it just sometimes it seems like mm -hmm. no, we I, have to always come back and do okay. I get it. Yes, All right, so now we have a vote, um, a motion and mm -hmm. a second. Alderman Blanton? Yes. Alderman Berger? Yes. Chair votes yes. Thank you. Item six. Consideration to grant sewer availability for 4046 Clovercroft Road, map 079, parcel 05401. So this property owner's requested one SFUE, which again is equivalent to a three quarter inch meter um, or a residential property. Um, if we can go to the second page of the map, please. So it's 4046 Clovercroft. Uh, if you recall, Franklin Christian Church to the west on the other side of the road, uh, they're extending a sanitary sewer line to serve their property. They've agreed to allow an easement to this property owner to extend underneath, um, I think it's John Williams Road, if I remember mm -hmm. correctly, yeah. um, and tie on to the sanitary sewer line that, that's currently being constructed. Okay. Um, department uh, supports this request. All right. Is there a motion? Motion to approve this question. Second. Okay. Uh, show me that. It still isn't coming up, and I did have a question on this. Uh, so where's the, in, in that red block? So there's a single family home that where, currently where exists the there. being built at? Right, right there. Yes, ma'am. they're building. So they want to come across. Correct. So you'll see a green line that, that's not actually constructed and accepted at this yep, point. Yep, I got it. I, um, got they, it. They, I know exactly where it is. Okay. Uh, I just wanted to make sure it was not... Yeah, I got it. Okay. When I first looked at that map, I was thinking it looked like Clovercroft, but Clovercroft's down there. Um, yeah, it's just going to go underneath. Where's it going to go underneath that? Up, up further or down by the road? I think it's going to be up closer to the home. I think it largely depends on where their septic system is going to be. So what they'll do is come out of their home, abandon the septic system uh, and field lines, tie onto that plumbing, and then go directly across same, under the road. Does the same stipulations apply to them? The same stipulations yes, apply? Yes, ma'am. They will be required to sign a, an availability and annexation agreement. Yeah. And I think this same. is going to be one of the last ones that we do under this, this model. So we have a an item going through BOMA right now to simplify this process where we do this once and then we're, we're done instead of bringing these agreements back to you, which is, has been complicating at times. So. so what do you mean when we approve it, it's all done at one time? Correct. So, so that will give us the authority, staff the authority, I think specifically Eric, the authority to execute those agreements based on um, the standard agreement. Okay. Got it. All right. Thanks. All right, um, we have a motion and a second. Mm -hmm. Alderman Blanton? Yes. Alderman Berger? Yes. Chair votes yes. Thank you. All right, Capital Projects Dashboard and Status Updates for September 2021. Are there questions? Pa uh, Paul and Jonathan, do you want to? I'll share a couple of quick speak. things with you, and you can see on the screen there. I'll I share an interesting picture our talk team captured for me yesterday and, and sent via email. 
a couple of the bridge beams being delivered, a couple of the final bridge beams being delivered for the Southeast Park Bridge. So those are actually coming down Murfreesboro Road and turning down onto Carruthers Parkway. So they actually delivered those yesterday afternoon. So I thought that was an interesting picture and just a awesome. good timing of the camera happened to be looking <laughs> that way. So where it, is that? That is coming eastbound on uh, Murfreesboro Road and turning right there where they built that new uh, dentist office and turning down by Walker Chevrolet onto Carruthers Parkway. And they're taking it down to the Southeast Park for the bridge. Up, Margaret. That's interesting. Did you see going down the road? Yeah. DMV is down there on the left. Okay. And Paul, and Paul Holzen would like you to believe that he's driving the truck. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, Paul. <laughs> if you look at the very back beam, Jonathan's on the back of that beam. No, Jonathan is yeah. not on the back beam. <laughs> with one a flag. Of the, one of the very cool things about those is they can actually, with, with those rear... Uh, dollies on, on those they can actually steer those rear dollies to help steer those around so very interesting uh, something we don't see very often is delivery of those those size beams through town and uh, they did a very good job getting those through town Where especially did they come from? Uh, I believe they were somewhere in West Tennessee is my understanding I don't I don't know exactly but I was somewhere in West Tennessee that was my understanding but I wasn't following it uh, the other thing I'll share with you is we received word this week uh, that we are, were selected to receive uh, some COVID uh, relief funding that was uh, dedicated for transportation. They've selected that to go out through to all the states uh, through part of that relief funding. Dedicated we're going to build the last leg of Mancatcher. No, unfortunately, it's not, <laughs> not that kind of It's funny. not anywhere near that much. Uh, I was just, I thought that. It was, uh, it, it's, uh, it was, it was, it was for all the states and it, of course, it got narrowed down as it, as it got doled out to the different areas, and we competed through a grant competition for our MPO area, and we ended up getting awarded. We submitted three projects, and we got awarded on one of the smaller ones uh, for our uh, request for uh, advanced transportation controllers, which is basically upgraded traffic signal controllers that can do some uh, new interoperability and new compatibility, some advanced features that we don't have in the, in the, in the area right now. Uh, it's, it's, Do you know how much that is? It is 200 and I'm going to get the number wrong, but $247,500. And that's 100% funded by the federal government. Awesome. So that will actually allow us to upgrade 74 or 75 traffic controllers in the field. And we have 124 total. So that would, we would normally do that on a case by case basis with projects or in maintenance a few a year. So that's something that's pretty exciting for us. Uh, that gets a lot of them upgraded at one time, allows us to do some pretty exciting things from the traffic operation center with regard to signal timing and have a lot of new compatibility in the field. So something pretty exciting when, for our top When team. you talk about upgrading, do you mean changing or maintaining or what are you talking about Th when you say physically, upgrade? Physically replacing parts that are in the, on the existing signal cabinets. The controllers. The controllers in the signal cabinets. What controls the lights? Do they wear out pretty regularly uh, they don't necessarily wear out but they they become old and obsolete just like a, they're, they're computers that control the signal cabinets is the best description i can give so just like a computer gets old and new models come out the same thing happens mm -hmm. with a, a traffic signal this will have increased functionality increased that we don't functionality. have today which will help Correct. us respond to traffic we can do things that will improve traffic flow potentially yes. which Correct. we do without touching any asphalt or turning any dirt yes, we, we improve the efficiency by upgrading the controller at the signal level. Does this have anything to do with the nine million that was discussed that we discussed at the conference? No, this has already been allocated. Okay. This isn't our money. This is money coming from the federal to the state, the the region. Correct. Um, and and we competed for it and got these these dollars. This is a sep totally separate bucket of money. Okay. Thank you. And then I'll answer any questions you have about well, anything the, else. Do you want to say anything about the Mac Hatcher extension? I will. That uh, might be good to recently touch on. That, it is scheduled to be completed at the you know, end of October, so October 31st, with a ribbon cutting. And please make sure I get this right on November 4th. November 4th, I believe, at 10 a.m. I had not heard the time, so thank you for so that. So stay tuned for that. But uh, Wait a minute. What it, what on November the 4th? Or the, the, ribbon the ribbon cutting for the Mac Hatcher extension. Okay, but... What about the 31st? That's when it opens. That's when it actually opens to traffic. Open, okay. 
And everybody needs to wear their witch hats, I guess, that day. <laughs> Halloween. With Halloween. Everybody will be out of town after the election's gone. Okay. Um, any else? other questions? I want to know what's going on in my ward. <laughs> you know, I don't have to ask. I just want to update. How are we doing with the, the pra um, not appraisals, but the acceptance of the right of way? There are several properties that, um, that we are having to send a condemnation that we are needing to get updated appraisals for because of the condemnation proceedings. So we are proceeding with that. We've already issued the, the work orders to the appraisers to get that done. And that's, that's basically where we're at with that right now. Uh, every offer that could have been offered has been has been made has at this it? point. Okay. Uh, so there's no, there's no offers that have been that are that have not been made at this point. Uh, I just sort of like to look at a timetable because people keep asking me about it, <coughs> and you know I don't know what to tell them as far as we d we don't have any we don't have to stop while we're waiting on the condemnation. So do we? The, the plans are 100% done. They're not changing at all. Correct. So They're not. That, we're just right now, and I mean, some of the condemnations, they go to condemnation because we can't get the banks to release a lien. Right. That's correct. We can't get them to even respond to us. So generally speaking, it's going to be another six to eight months to try to get through the condemnation process to get right away certified. But the second that certification happens, we turn around and submit final final the final construction plans that are done and then work to get that notice to proceed for uh, construction. So I mean, it, we're not stopping, but the right away process, unfortunately, just takes so takes time. Are all these condemnations only on people who've not responded, or people who haven't accepted the bids? Uh, I guess it's both, but it's, it's it's both. Yeah, there's there's definitely some that, you know, they're not responding to us. There are some that responded quickly and we settled, and there are some that are willing to settle. We just can't get their banks to release. So that's just a it's, it's a, a mixed combination. Budget. Okay. Can you set a deadline? Huh. I, th I think within the next six to eight months, we'll have right away 100% in the condemnation Good. phase, like Good. scheduling court dates and everything else. Okay. And then it's and then it's another probably a year, unfortunately, of going through the TDOT process to do that final design, get that final design approval, and the permitting associated with it. And at that point, we'll be able to issue the get the hopefully get the notice to proceed for construction. I don't know what they're doing down there. Why would it take a whole year to do that? Yeah, it's, well, it's just I, uh, the steps we have to go through, unfortunately, with these federal funding. This doesn't have anything to do with, with you, actually, but I cannot wait to see how they're going to handle the traffic and the pedestrian traffic this weekend on Franklin Road. Well, it's going to be very similar to what you've seen in past years. There'll be a dedicated lane for pedestrians to go from downtown to one for pedestrians and one for traffic one for cars it's the same flow where it goes mm -hmm. continuous yeah. one way in and then the the two entrances will go one way out so it, it's very similar to what you've seen it's just going to be years. different with all that equipment there it actually will not because we're making adjustments and they're getting the equipment out of the out of the way but you'll see it'll be very similar to the plans we've used and learned from in previous years. So um, we really use one flow to keep it continuous and easy. And so that actually works okay with, with the way it lays out uh, with the project. And the contractor's been really good to make accommodations and time it in such a way that, that it doesn't disrupt. That's and it can and be and as normal as possible. Yeah, to the, ex to the extent possible, which obviously it's still an ongoing construction site and there's only so much they can do, but they are trying to work with us as much as they can. And we gave them a heads up when they started the contract that yeah. pilgrimage was going to happen and, and they knew that going into it. So they are trying to secure everything that they can reasonably and they're, they're trying to clean up as much as they can reasonably knowing that they're going to have a lot of people coming through that site. So they do know that's coming up. Well, it, it's, it's going to be a challenge, but, you know, I think that's expected. Yeah. And, and if you've noticed, there's been a few places out there where they're doing some temporary paving to secure places to make sure there's good ingress and egress during the week. So that's what they've been doing the last few days. Mm -hmm. And they removed all the plates, backfilled things, everything, yeah. just making sure it's safe. And the weather will be nice, I hope. Oh, yeah. It's supposed it to be sure great. looks like it. <laughs> Fall. Knock on wood. 
Just all right. Uh, not hot at all. If there's no other business, then I'll accept a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Alderman Blanton? Yes. Alderman Berger? Uh, and yes. Chair? Yes. Mm -hmm. We are adjourned. <laughs>